Are you tired of upgrading your laptop every couple of years because Windows gets slower and slower due to unnecessary features? Did you buy a cheap low-spec laptop for yourself or as a present which just sits around unused? Maybe your device is so old that it doesn't receive any Windows updates anymore and is exposed to security vulnerabilities. Whatever it is. If you are watching this video, then you want to know how you can revive those devices and squeeze out just a couple more months or even years of lifetime. And all that without compromising a solid desktop experience. But before we begin, I quickly want to remind you that you don't forget to give this video a like and why not also subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Alright, so let's start off. This is an old Acer Aspire 1 notebook, which belonged to my parents and has been sitting around for years at this point. Why? Well first off, the Windows 10 edition which was up here did not receive any updates anymore, which means that going into the internet is not really a good idea. On top of that, with only 1GB of RAM and a single core 2 threads GPU with clock speeds way beyond being acceptable for a smooth experience. Yeah, let me say that it wasn't a pleasant experience anymore. So let's fix it. Alright, so the first thing that we want to do is to find an operating system that is lightweight, aka small in size that it takes up on your hard drive, as well as small in terms of running background processes. It also needs to support basic security features and continue to being updated so that we can safely use the internet. Now there are many choices out there, but I found Sorin OS, a free and open source Linux operating system, or also called distribution, to stick out from the crowd. Sorin OS features a really good looking user interface, which is based on the desktop environment GNOME. It also features a light edition, which can run on ultra low end hardware, just like ours. Now I should mention that the light edition does not feature GNOME as its desktop environment, but they swapped it to the more lightweight XFCE. In terms of visual quality, they are basically identical and just show minor differences in animations and other small details. So let's try it out. With a click on the download button, you get a prompt to subscribe to the newsletter. Good news, you don't have to sign up and can just click on skip to download. The next step is to flash the downloaded ISO onto an empty USB stick with a tool like Blina Etcher, Rufus or the Fedora Media Writer. Then we can simply connect it to our device, go into the UFI or BIOS to change the boot order and save our changes. Installing Sorin OS is really easy and straightforward. Select a language and the keyboard layout, choose if we already want to install updates straight away and very importantly, install third party software which is often needed for your device to function properly. However, on some devices, installing third party software gets the installer stuck, so you just have to try it or leave it unticked for now. You can always re enable it after Sorin OS is installed. If you, however, select it, then I would also recommend you to set up Secure Boot if you have it enabled. So just enter a password, which you will be asked later after a reboot. The last option here is basically for deactivating some very cut down telemetry, which helps the developers to collect data about system configurations, how many users they have and similar. If you want to help them, then you can leave it unticked or you just check it and move on. Now we want to select Erase Disk and install Sorin OS, since we want to replace our Windows installation and we could alternatively also enable LVM, which encrypts our drive like Windows BitLocker. Then we'll just follow the installer's instructions and wait until it's done. After a reboot, you're either booting straight into Sorin OS or you get a screen like this, if you set up secure boot prior. If you did, then you go on and roll mock and enter the password that you set earlier. While Sorin OS looks and feels a lot like Windows, which might seem good when you're initially coming from it, let me remind you that Linux and its vast amount of desktop environments is not Windows. Keeping that in mind is important if you want to find settings and especially important how you download and install software. See, on Windows, you typically open up a web browser, search for what you want to download and hopefully find an exe file from a trusted source. On Linux, we do things differently and frankly, much safer. All you need to do is to open the software center, search for what you need and press install. And that's it. 
Only if you can't find a specific piece of software, then you can look it up online. But given that Sorin OS already comes with Flatpak and its huge Flathub repository installed, you shouldn't really have the need for it. Alright, after I've installed a different browser and a few applications, as well as downloaded the third party drivers through the software center, how does it perform on this low spec machine? Well, the overall desktop experience is slightly faster than Windows, and looking at the utilization of our RAM and CPU, it is apparent that Sorin OS definitely uses less resources than Windows did. However, you shouldn't expect miracles. If you have a web browser or have several different applications open, then the hardware limitations do become apparent. But the overall experience is really solid. Compared to the core version of Sorin OS, Lite feels almost identical, since they really did a good job of matching the user interface. The differences in file managers or right-click submenus is really minor. It is more lightweight than Windows, has many customization options to suit your personal needs, and of course, most importantly, it gets updates. Additionally, if we were to upgrade the HDD to an SSD in this device, then this laptop would become more than well usable again. And of course, you also shouldn't forget that this system in particular is really as slow as they get. Which means that if you had, let's say, 2 or 4 GB of RAM, then the performance difference between Windows and Sorin OS would be a lot more apparent. I mean, check this out. On the left upper corner, we have Sorin OS Lite. On the right, we have Sorin OS Core. And in the middle, we have Windows 10 Home. All of the systems have two cores and four threads and 4 GB of RAM. From the general RAM usage in idle alone, we can tell that there are huge differences between these operating systems, which can have an impact on how fast applications start and how many programs can be run simultaneously. So yeah, instead of throwing out your old notebook, I hope you consider installing Sorry Noise Lite on it, because it sure as heck can make a difference. So if you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like, and why not also subscribe to the channel while you're at it. If you still hear me say this, then you're definitely interested. Speaking of which, why don't you continue watching another video? And all that's left to say now is, good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.